Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Season 2, Episode 2 of The Expanse. This episode is called Doors and Corners. Exciting. I can imagine Doors and Corners. Sort of feels like a chase to me, but we'll see what happens. I absolutely loved the last episode. It's one of my favourite episodes of the series so far i felt like the pace was really rapid we were starting to see the tension building between mars and earth great to get a proper glimpse into martian culture i really loved the toing and froing between avasarala and erin wright and avasarala so far managing to stay alive and stay about one step ahead of erin wright we also got the little hookup with <laughs> naomi and jim entertained the way that they're working miller into the team is also brilliant i love the way that alex brought everyone together around the lasagna to actually start having them hang out together so they're not just working together but they're building relationships and just the way that amos piled up with miller at the end i thought was adorable i actually really appreciated the detail of that more afterwards when i was editing it when he's you can actually watch his miller's talking and amos is like maintaining eye contact with a smile and he's actually dishing up his piece of lasagna for him loved it absolutely loved it there was also the big reveal about phoebe and what does this mean for the proto molecule where did it come from was it sent deliberately is it just an accident of the universe we have absolutely no idea and that i think is the question that kept rattling around in my head there were lots of things i loved about the episode particularly the introduction of bobby draper who i just was like you're insane but i kind of love you you guys know how much I love a female badass and that was some serious badassery that was going on last episode. She arm wrestled her fucking robot, guys. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. But of course, now we've got the bigger question. <laughs> um, and as, as much as I loved her entry, actually the biggest thing in that episode for me was the stuff about the proto-molecule. That's the thing that I've continued to think about after the episode and just be like, where how why i mean are any of those questions even important because sometimes st stuff is just it just is there is no master plan i get that what jules pierre and dresden planned to do was to the basically the only way they could learn about the evolution of the proto molecule was to feed it so they decided to feed it a hundred thousand human beings but because they're belters, that don't really matter to people like Jules Pierre, which is obviously absolutely infuriating. It kind of brought to mind to me like Dr. Mengele during the Nazi Holocaust, where they were basically conducting horrific so-called scientific experiments on, um, you know, Jewish, gay and other victims of the Holocaust. And the selection came. The selection by Dr. Mengele. I had no more feelings left. It, it was just wiped out from me. Any normal love didn't exist anymore. It was just fear, and even fear was just nothing. It was just just a t total apathy. I was bare and stark naked, together with all the other girls. And um, again, in a mass of girls were walking in front of him. And there he sat in a chair, and there he sat with his stick in his hand, and he moved that from right to left, and it, we knew, I knew that meant either life or death. You knew that? I knew that. It was just disgusting, and it really gave me that feel again of where it's like science without morality is every bit as dangerous as any other ideological framework. Even though people feel like science is just purely rational. Well, you know what? People aren't purely rational and we, we, we shouldn't actually just be solely rational. We should also be, I believe, um, compassionate and value each other equally and outside of any sort of pseudo-scientific or even economic 
some kind of ascription of value that we place because if not i think you end up risking the very humanity that you're attempting to save or develop or whatever so that's really great to have that question raised again like so many other issues i think the show is doing a fantastic job of creating a fictional universe in which you're asking very real pertinent questions about our real world as i said in the review last episode i cannot wait to get back to eros i need to see what is going on and what the impact is going to be on the rest of us is this one life form that's been created are there going to be multiple life forms and and does it have an agenda is is this life form kind of imbued with some sort of purpose is it just simply going to exist and then make its way as it so chooses how what level of sentience does it have i just honestly I'm absolutely chock full of questions so i'm going to shut up now and go into the episode in the hopes that maybe a couple of them are answered or at least addressed so without further ado let's have at it they weren't firing on the hill they intended to miss a first shot across the bow thank heaven captain Evgeny has a cool head or we'd be already blasting each other's cities the bb station was a joint facility run by an earth corp the only intel saying it was abandoned came from mars and now two-thirds of their fleet is heading for earth you think that's just a training exercise they're burning sunward that doesn't mean they're getting ready for an invasion their helium and titanium supply lines which we help defend are vital to their terraforming efforts if we threaten to shut them down trade embargo no what we need to do is order the nathan hale to take out the Sirocco now if we go this way we're going to be watching each other's ships fall from the sky sir if i may what the deep radar station on Deimos. It's mostly automated, minimal personnel. Casualties will be light. You want us to attack a Martian? What? It's a declaration of war. No, it's a warning. It's a goddamn serious one, but that's the point. It shows that we're willing to strike at the heart of their territory. A base for a base. I don't know how we can get much more proportional than that. I need a resolution from the Security Council first. We'll call for a vote immediately. I will not support this escalation. Oh no. Are you saying you won't carry out a lawfully given order? Oh. I stepped down as fleet commander. No, no, no. They're going to replace him with a fucking Hulk. Oh no. That was dramatic. <laughs> Again with the necklace. Maybe it's the story of where the hell you've been since then without one goddamn word of communication back to me. We were on Eros. We barely got out alive. And the only reason we're here now is to see if you want to do something about it. Who the hell was this <laughs> asshole? I'm the asshole who found your operative. Her name was Juliet Andromeda Mao. In case you're interested, she died alone. On arrows, waiting for you OPA chair jackies to come help her. It was something new. A life form. Possibly extrasolar in origin. Shit. An alien life form? According <laughs> to the Jim Mung who discovered it on Phoebe. At least some of the people responsible for Eros are gonna be there. If we want answers, we have to take that station. It's floating dark, barely registers on radar, but it's got a habitat ring, which means someone's home. Well, I don't do that kind of thing anymore. Come on! And the OPA is not an army. We're going with or without you. Julie died for the belt. She believed everything you guys say you're fighting for. Don't waste it. Whoa! Pulse. I'm just wondering if ultimately the Navu could be. Can we nick the Navu? Could they like turn the Navu into like a kick-ass military ship, which might be the one ship in the whole fucking galaxy by the look of it that could actually take on these little stealth bastards? It's just a really big target though, isn't it? And they don't have shields. I keep I keep thinking in Star Trek mode of like the bigger the ship the better, but I guess that's not always the case with this you guys were saying also the problem of like keeping it cool and everything else 
is really difficult. But I really want Fred Johnson to get involved in this, assuming he's a positive ally, and let's go fuck some people up on this outpost. I need some answers. They're going to have them. Let's do it. Pl no one gives a shit Are you about trying it. to make yourself feel bad about this? I'm going to feel better when I watch those assholes burn. Look, I'm for killing whoever needs killing, but it's not going to make you feel better. I mean, doing nothing is just as bad as doing the wrong thing. Being a bystander. I mean, what kind of people are we that we only help? <laughs> I must have died. Your copain said he'd buy me drinks if I sit here and listen to you. That was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh my god, I do love him though. Have 10,000 rounds. If Alex burned 2,800, just get another donor, we may have a problem. 40 millimeter spanner, please. You. you never wanted to be on the same team as Fred Johnson or be tangled up with the OPA again. Time's change. I ran with some bad people once. Stupid kids with OPA tests and big ideas. I got involved in some things, and innocent people died. But this time it's different. After Eros, I'm angry. Mm. Do you think the others have a sense about what's going on with us? I mean, Amos, in particular? We could make a public announcement, get everyone on the same page, or take out an ad. No, it's just... What did he say? He said he'd be okay throwing me into space without my helmet, but that you wouldn't like it. Sounds like Amos. He really did. Let's try to behave. If we can't behave, we'll tread slightly. We have bigger things to worry about anyway. Hmm? All I can tell you is that we're assaulting the station and are expecting heavy resistance. I need 50 people with combat experience. They'll get top hazard pay and first dibs on the new equipment contracts. Keep leaking the Arta's hand. Maybe he toss you a few more scrap from his table. It's not most on me that Black Sky resents my position here. But trust me, now is not the time for factions or debate. We just had a UN drone on her. Came this close to wasting that whoopo of a Sarala. It was them. When we hit the inners a hundred more times, we gonna find out. Well, I'm sorry I wasted your time. <laughs> You're not wasting my time, I do Our time! Whoa! Bye! <laughs> Don't fuck with Fred. Sorry now, sucker. What happened with Eros? It wasn't a plague. It was a genocide on Belters. Done by those think we're weak, divided, a thousand different tribes scattered across the belt who could never unite and fight back. I need 50 good fighters. Send your best. Wow. run yet. Oh, is that goddamn rip? You have to flush out and engage that stealth ship or the pods will never make it to the station. Load it up again. Hey, uh, your ship keeps getting killed. We start further away than else with torpedoes. We get too close and start railgun. Listen, I hope you understand if I ask you to sit this one out. What the hell you I ever be out on a ship? <laughs> uh, going down on the assault team. Have you seen the breaching what? pod? It's a beer can taped to a rocket. You're not gonna like the ride. Fred's trying to land 50 pissed off pelters and seven different OPA factions on that station. I mean, somebody's gotta keep these idiots from shooting each other. Oh, I ain't sitting this one out. Wow. Leave it. 
We'll be waiting for you when you get back. Oh man. Ooh. I'll have him in tonic with a lime. You're not as invisible as you think you I'm are. I'm not in a covert up. Your transfer went through this afternoon. Jupiter fate could come in. And when gets my old job, much obliged. You drink. Sit. Is that an order? If that'll make you sit your ass down, yes. Please. Now, why don't you grow a pair and tell me what you really think? <laughs> what just two people having a drink. I'll get the ball rolling. I'm a smug old bitch who enjoys playing with life and death on her big chess board. You, Madame Undersecretary, may be the worst person I have ever met. You grew a pair? Now why don't you grow a pair and tell me why you're here? Tell me about Fred Johnson. We're here. You don't understand shit Sorry. about Fred Johnson. Enlighten me. Oh, then you want the real story? Yes. The belters who seized control of Anderson Station were trying to negotiate for days. UNN Command was jamming their comms. But when the belters finally gave up... They covered up. Colonel Johnson wasn't told that they'd surrendered. <gasps> if he knew, he would have never called that strike in. Oh, God, no. Why wasn't he told? Because the powers that be wanted to send a message to the belt. Defy us, we wipe you out. Message oh. sent. And Fred Johnson switched sides, why? As a revenge against Earth. So does that make him a hero or a traitor? I don't know what it makes him. But I know that he's an honorable man who held on to his soul, and that is a tough thing to do in this line of work. Oh! Oh! I need to send a communique off everybody's radar. No traces back to me. I want to talk to Fred Johnson. <gasps> oh, yes! That is treason, isn't it? It certainly is. Wow. Holy shit, this season! Your team ready. It's getting to be that time. Roger that. Oh, God, this is happening now? Okay. So a FedEx crate on there. Stay away from the aqua. Stay away from the aqua. Star Helix. What you doing here? Where's Hugo? He looks a bit. Okay, Naomi. On your mark, Colonel. I thought I was done with all this. Sending people to their deaths. Fuck's sake. Everybody here is a volunteer. That was the old trick. Get them to believe that it was their own idea. Arsenate, we are a go. I'm really starting to appreciate Alex's pilot skills, I gotta say. This is a legal notification that we are on approach to a loose cargo container and have filed a salvage claim. Any interference with our property will result in civil action. I mean, it's a good plan. What you doing here? Hmm? It's not arrows. No shit. You see what they did there? Those are pretty. We gotta burn them all down, Oala. Make them pay. Space. Oh, no. <laughs> what kind of fence are you, Papa? I keep an eye on you, old man. I'm looking forward to see how that plays out. Heat her up! <laughs> Texas are up! Where's that stealth ship? It's supposed to be here. Oh no! No, no, no! Oh, shit! Shit, guys! Hang on! Oh my god! Oh my god! Naomi, what's our status? The holes have been breached! Put the station between us and the 
Here's the FedEx. I swear to God, if this show makes me fall in love with Amos just to kill him, I'm going to lose my tiny mind. Play. I would not want to be in those FedEx tin cans. Jesus Christ. 
Everybody stay here. Nobody move. Follow the wires, Miller. Follow the wires. <gasps> That's the DNA um strand that um is that Dresden? Anyway, turn it off, dirtbag. Now's the time for all good men to come to the aid of their species. Oh shit. <laughs> oh justified. You're in an excellent bargaining position. Tell me what you want and we'll negotiate. You're gonna help us make a vaccine. No, that goes against everything we're trying to accomplish. You infected a station full of They're builders. infected to save us all! You're gonna have to be a hell of a lot more specific than that. Quite. We made a discovery on Phoebe. We know. An organism that can repurpose other life forms and use them to evolve. Oh, shit. Into what? That's what we're trying to find out. In a controlled, isolated environment that can be sterilized if it gets out of hand. You could have fed it a vat of bacteria. Uh, I'm not interested in the cosmic fate of bacteria. The protomolecule is proof that we're not alone in the universe and our ticket out of the limitations that bind us to these pathetic little bubbles of rock and air. If we master it, we can apply it. Apply it to what? To everything. We become our own gods. Oh, God. Fucking idiot. Human beings able to live in hard vacuum without a suit or under the crushing atmosphere of a gas giant or able to hibernate long enough to travel to the stars. And that's why you were willing to start a war. Have you heard of Genghis Khan? A quarter of the entire population on Earth during his conquests. Today, that's the equivalent of 10 billion people. Eris is hardly a rounding error by comparison. And that justifies all this. Of course it does. The protomolecule wasn't sent here by accident. Earth was its target. It was sent to hijack life on our planet for its own ends. You can't save Eros. All you can do now is waste the data and ensure that every man, woman, and child on that rock die for nothing. The data will erase itself if anyone other than me tries to decrypt it. Without this work, humanity will be left unarmed, ignorant, vulnerable. To an enemy who has already fired the first shot. So we have an understanding. We're gonna need complete access to the data, as well as the names of everyone responsible for setting this in motion. Done. know how to feel if I'm honest when he started talking I was like fuck you and then it's like I said I think I said at the end of season one that a generous interpretation would be that they actually are trying to save us from something and so as tempting as it is to sit on my moral high horse and say what they did was completely wrong I'm very grateful I don't have to make that decision because <laughs> that is not black and white at all and I guess my actions and you can call me a complete hypocrite if you like is like once something is done you're not going to bring the hundred thousand people back so it almost feels like you could argue by killing Dresden and just shutting down the project without gleaning the learning, then those people died for nothing. On the other side of that, you say, well, hang on a minute. If we use anything associated to this genocide, then we're kind of accomplices after the fact. 
And if you do nothing, and Dresden's right, then how many people are on Earth now? Is it like 30 billion or something? Like a really crazy high population. Basically, everyone's dead. And how do they know the origin or the purpose of the life form? So all of this is predicated on the assumption that it does harbour ill intent and it is deliberate. What if it isn't? And how would we even find that out? And all of those questions have to be addressed under the ticking time bomb of this thing is developing and growing and learning. So it can just harness other life forms and use them to evolve? That's terrifying. So you could end up with a species that's got all of the like sustaining best attributes of everything that has ever lived. Like it could fly, it could not need to breathe underwater or like absorb oxygen, like be like a fish underwater, like a bird in the sky, like, oh my God, this just gets bigger and better every single episode. Oh my God. Oh, Alex is piloting as well this episode. I've, I don't, I'm not sure if I've actually focused, but just so you know, I have like quietly been in admiration of the development of Alex as we've gone forward because I really did not like him at the beginning. I'm actually, he's really grown on me. He's like a thoroughly decent person. And he is really becoming a major asset to the team. I mean, he's always been an asset, but he just absolutely smashed that episode. That was amazing. And they managed to beat one of the stealth ships. Of course, the Rosinante is now in quite some serious state of disrepair. How are they going to repair it? Naomi was already saying that they burnt through some of the things and where are they going to get replacements and now they've got a whole bunch of other stuff they're going to need to fix. So I don't know quite how that's going to happen. I'm hoping that maybe Fred Johnson can help. You know, he's in the process of all the stuff he's got to get for the Nauvoo. Maybe he can like get hold of some parts and... That feels like a pretty good quid pro quo. Although now Fred Johnson is going to be seriously pissed at Miller, who took the, all of those choices that I was just discussing away from everyone else by just shooting Dresden in the head, which I'm sorry, I think was really fucking stupid. I understand the rage. I can't say I wouldn't have done the same in his situation. So it's not like I, I don't understand why, or I would necessarily have the coolness of head in the circumstances to have done any different but those things aside it's still a mistake we could have got out about Jean Pierre because he Miller still doesn't know that he could now know that he's created a link between himself and Jean Pierre who's behind this there's a whole bunch of information that we could have just got out of Dresden that we now can't get because Miller decided to take actions into his own hands. <sighs> that was a dick move. And Fred, I think everyone looked miffed. And the data is now going to be destroyed. So they're completely back to square one, effectively. They've got no leads. So I, it's difficult to see where they're going to go from here, other than focus on repairing the ship. Then Avasarala is about to make contact with Fred Johnson. How's that conversation going to go now? He could have had... Oh, God, he could... If, if Miller wouldn't have shot Dresden, Fred could have found out about Jules Pierre and been able to say to Avasarala, is Jules Pierre, and she would have been completely in a no and able to start manoeuvring. And now she... Oh. Mm. Annoying. No, I think I'm going to stop it there for that episode. I bloody love that. Absolutely loved it. Until the next time, bye-bye.
Today we're going to be watching season two, episode two. <laughs> <clears throat> 